I'm so humbled just to share with you a moment of prayer. There is no way you can teach prayer without praying. Um, you can never know. Prayer is just never taught. It is caught. When you do it, you know it. But when you don't do it, even if you have a lot of information about it, it may never help you. And so prayer by its, itself is, is normally caught when people do it. And you can easily learn it. Praise the Lord. Um, I want us to look at something in the Bible and then we will be praying um, as we go on. Um, I want us to look on something I've entitled Atmosphere Setters for Kingdom Manifestation. Um, there is need for you to know that for us to be able to see the kingdom revealed, we need people that can set the atmosphere. The atmosphere is very important for any kingdom um, revelation, for any kingdom manifestation. We must have people that are going to set the atmosphere. Um, I have come to believe in my short moment in ministry that every time period of life on earth is associated with happenings. There is no moment in the history of the earth without uh, happenings that are aching to come. They want to be revealed. They want to be brought to realization. And uh, every generation of period that we ever live carries certain happenings to be birthed in that time. But I've come to realize that as much as every generation of period, every time moment that we live has certain divine happenings to be revealed, not all of them get revealed because we have to get people that can set them into motion. We have to find men and women that will be able to set an environment that allows the happenings to come to pass. And so that's why as we come together, the base that we can begin to look at is can we stand as atmosphere setters? Can we stand as people that wherever we are, be it upon our families, be it in our generation, we can stand and we can be looked upon as people that are setting the atmosphere. Somebody say amen. And I want us to look at this so uh, deeply because I believe for certain happenings to happen, there must be somebody that is setting them to happen. They don't just happen. Nothing just comes to pass. I believe this dream, uh, Zimmerman deliverance, was there even before it is. But it took somebody to take risk and set an environment for us to see what we are seeing. It means there are several visions, there are several dreams, there are several revelations to be brought to birth. But they are waiting for people that can be able to set the course and prepare the path for those happenings to happen. Can somebody say amen? I want you to know that as much as we have these things to happen, uh, not most of them happen because it is not automatic. The happenings hangeth over. They may be in terms of visions. They may be in terms of dreams. They may be in terms of prophetic declarations that are hanging over places. If you look in the book of Ezra chapter 1, from verse number 1, you realize that uh, the Bible says that us, so that it may be um, uh, realized, the prophecy that was spoken by prophet Jeremiah, the Lord stirred up the heart of Cyrus. It means there was a word, there was a prophetic declaration that was hanging, waiting to be realized. It was over the generation, but it was waiting to be realized until some person's heart was stirred to be able to bring it to realization. It means it shows us that how many things hangeth over our generation, hangeth over our families, hangeth over our genealogies that are waiting for people that can be able to set the atmosphere, prepare the way, raise a platform for them to happen. It means me and you, we have a challenge so that whatever we are doing, we can be able to do it with the mentality that we are not just there uh, to add up to others, but we are atmosphere setters. We are people to set the environment that is going to cause and attract 
certain happenings into our lives and into our families. I believe even in our days, even as we take the, uh, we share this message, I know down in your mind, you need to be looking at the environment and looking at your generation and looking at your family and placing yourself, positioning yourself as somebody that will cause something to happen. Somebody that will make whatsoever people have never seen over your family to be able to be seen. Somebody that will be able to make whatsoever that has never happened to be able to happen. I believe that is what we are looking at as we begin this moment of prayer together. Somebody say amen. This proves to us that there hangeth many things over places. There hangeth, I believe, um, when I went to Busia, even when I began the church, the church, the dream, the commission was there. It was waiting for somebody to set it on. There are many things that hangeth, waiting for people to be able to bring them to realization. I want you to know, these are the people I call atmosphere setters. People that stand over their generation, they understand the value of atmosphere. And they know that atmosphere influences happenings. They know that the climate influences happenings. There are certain things that will happen not because of anything, but because of the atmosphere that has been set in that place. And we'll be looking at that in the Bible. If you remind yourself, even in your classes, when you are in your in your classes, uh, in your agriculture class, uh, I remember one time we planted seeds of the same species and, uh, and we did them into different environments and the outcome was different. We did not get the same because the environment determined determine the outcome of what, what, what we actually saw. It means and it shows how atmosphere can be able to determine whatsoever we desire. When we set the right atmosphere, it can be able to actually set a trend of certain happenings. A trend of certain things in our lives. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that it is important and God is looking for men and women that can set atmosphere. People that can set an environment for certain happenings. The environment that will attract things. I believe with all my heart that we are not just meant to chase after things, but we are meant to attract things. You can attract things instead of chasing after the things. And you can do that by setting an atmosphere. When you set an environment, when you set an environment, it will make for certain happenings without struggle. I normally tell my village church where I preach, and I tell them, you don't need to struggle to get flies in your home. You only need to get some feces in your home, and flies will locate it. You don't need to struggle to bring them. And you know, how will I bring flies here? Just defecate in that compound. Just do something. And when the environment is set, my friend, you don't pray to see flies. They will come to your home. Because you have prepared an environment for them to come. No wonder Jesus said, where there is some flesh, the vultures will, cut, will gather in that place. When you put something in place, it will attract certain things. That's why you must understand that the environment you set will determine what comes on your way. The atmosphere you set will determine what follows your way. And that's why maybe you are here and you wonder why are certain things happening. Look at the atmosphere you have set. Look at the environment you have set. When you set the right environment, it will attract the right things you want. And that's why we must look at this and look, look at it. I want you to look in First Samuel chapter number 19, a narrative in the Bible that is very interesting. The Bible says in First Samuel chapter number 19, uh, I'll begin from verse number 19. This is what the Bible writes, uh, a, a small story that um, uh, caught up my attention. I know you've read. You read it, you know it. But I just want us to look at something that I, I looked at it um, as I read it. Uh, the Bible says in First Samuel chapter number 19, uh, from verse number 19, uh, word came to Saul, David is in Nioth at Ramah. And so he sent men to capture him. But when they saw a group of prophets prophesying, with Samuel standing there in the, as their leader, the Spirit of God came upon Saul's men. 
and they also prophesied. Saul was told about it and he sent more men and they also prophesied. Saul sent men at that time and they also prophesied. Finally, he himself, he decided for, uh, I think I need to do something. He left for Rama and went to the great cistern at Seku. And he asked, where are Samuel and David? Over in Nayoth at Rama, they see. And so Saul went at, to Nayoth at Rama, but the Spirit of God came even upon him and he walked along doing what? Prophesying until he came to Nayoth. He stripped off his robes and also prophesied in Samuel's presence. He lay that way. Uh, uh, he, lay, he lay that way all that day and night. This is why people say he saw also among the prophets. I want you to look at this man, Samuel, as a prophet by the virtue of his office. He dwells in Ramah, in Nayoth. And in this place, this man seems to have set an atmosphere, a prophetic atmosphere. In this place, to the level that everybody that appears in that place, it doesn't matter if it is an enemy. When he steps in that environment, he does what that environment does. I need to look at that. But anybody that enters that place, even them that were sent as enemies, when they arrived at Rama, the Bible says they began to prophesy. And all, I mean, as if Saul was like, what is wrong with these guys? They are weaklings. I think I, mean, I need to do something. What is wrong? He doesn't know that the environment, the place he's sending these guys is an environment captured in prophecy. But when you enter there, even if you are not a prophet, <laughs> even if you are not a prophet, when you enter that place, you begin to prophesy. And everybody begins to ask themselves, what's wrong? Is Saul even among the prophets? The answer is no. He just tapped into the environmental atmosphere. He entered into that atmosphere which actually was charged with prophecy. It was charged with the spirit of prophecy. And because of that, he began to prophesy. He began to do what is done in that place. What I'm trying to say is that we can be able, we can be able to set an atmosphere. We can be able to set an environment to the level that even our enemies, when they enter that atmosphere, they shall appreciate our God. They shall appreciate what we are doing because we have set an atmosphere. We have set an environment that actually has been charged and stirred up. But in, in that environment, we don't worry what will happen because we know that the atmosphere is charged by what we worship, by what we believe. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that we can set an environment. We can prepare an atmosphere. It proves to us that we can create an, an atmosphere for certain happenings in our home. Somebody say amen. Even in your home, you can set an atmosphere. So that whomsoever enters that home shall be able to appreciate the God you serve. Whomsoever enters that home shall be able to come to terms and understand that this is not just a normal, ordinary, nominal home. It is a home that is actually of men and women that fear the law. You can set an atmosphere. And that's why you must change your salvation. Not just to be a mere salvation. It must be a, a salvation that sets an atmosphere. So that people know I'm not just saved, but even my environment is influenced by my salvation. I am not just there as people see as an ordinary person, but people must know that where I am, the environment also responds to whatsoever I believe, whatsoever I worship. I believe we can set an atmosphere. 
That's what I believe. And even as we come to this moment of prayer, I want you to have a focus that we can set an atmosphere for certain happenings. And they begin to happen without struggle because we have set the atmosphere. Even this church, we can put an atmosphere that whomsoever enters this place shall not just be the very person that goes back, but the spirit of the house shall be able to take over them. The spirit of the house shall be able to overtake their lives. It is possible to set an atmosphere. And that's why I want you to know as we look at this moment of prayer, let's change our perspective of prayer. Prayer is not just something we enter, but it is a tool to set the atmosphere. It is a tool to prepare an environment. That's why you must not just take it for granted. It is a great tool for our lives. Somebody say amen. It is possible to set an atmosphere. Heavenly will have come to understand doesn't just happen on earth. It is influenced. Heavenly will doesn't just happen. It is influenced. No wonder in Job chapter 8 verse number 11. This is what the Bible says. In Job chapter 8 verse number 11. This is what the Bible says. In Job chapter 8 verse number 11. Uh, the Bible says, uh, Job, Job, not Joshua, Job. Job chapter 8 Verse number 11. This is what the Bible says as we want to look at. Um, this is the question the Bible asks. Can we go together? What does it say? Can papyrus grow tall where there is no marsh? And number two, can reeds thrive? Huh? Just verse 11 alone. Okay, can we, can we go together? Can reeds thrive without? In other words, where you see papyrus, down it, there is marsh. Where you see reeds, you can know there is an atmosphere that sustains it. It is called water. So when you see something happening, it's because there is an environment that sustains it. When you see something happening in your life, there is an environment that keeps it and attracts it and makes it to be there. And that should be one of the things that makes you to understand to pray. Because certain happenings determine what is in our environment. When you see certain things happen, it means there is something in my environment that is giving it a foothold. It is giving it something that makes it to be sustained in my life. If I want it no more, I can change my environment. I have to handle it. I have to change it because that is the only way we can do it. I want you to know heaven's will is not just happening. It is influenced. There must be an environment. This is God himself speaking. There must be an environment that allows for certain happenings to happen. No wonder um, uh, if you look even in your Bible in many aspects, even in our days, and it shows us that, that even in our days, they are, I mean, they are moments that are pregnant of divine happenings. But we need atmosphere setters. There are things that need to happen. There is a need for somebody over some family in this meeting, over some village, over some place, that is going to install, that is going to pioneer, that is going to set up an atmosphere for certain happenings. Because they don't just happen. Somebody must set the atmosphere. Can somebody say amen? amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know, even as you look in the history of the church, if you look at the history of the church, um, the history of the church has had a share of men that I call atmosphere setters. People that understand that even when God speaks, it will not just happen until somebody engages to set the atmosphere. There are many people that we can talk about, men like John Patrick, people behind them is revival. The revivalists that we have seen are men that understood that when God speaks a word of prophecy, there must be somebody to engage to make it come to pass. 
Just because God has spoken does not guarantee it's happening. There must be somebody that must respond and set the environment for that word to come to pass. Otherwise, it will not just pass because God has said. But he understood. And people like Daniel give us a lesson. And you'll see, the Bible says in Daniel chapter 9, Daniel understood by books, isn't it? He began to read books and he understood that the Lord had prophesied. The Lord had said that we would stay here for only 70 years. And it's time, but we are still in bondage. We are still in this place. How comes we are wasting some other extra years? We need to be somewhere else, but we are still in this place in exile. And so, what did he do? The Bible says he set to begin to pray. He set to begin to ask God. He set to begin to set the environment for their return. He understood that God will not just do things because he has said he will do because there is an atmosphere setter. There is somebody that understands I am responsible for what God has said. And I need to prepare the environment. I need to set what is possible to allow what God has said to happen in my life. To allow what God has promised to be able to come to pass. And that's why you need to know you can choose to be a thermostat in the church or a thermometer. You can choose any one of them. There are people that are just there to measure the temperature of the house. And there are people that are there to influence the temperature of the house. They can make it. They can prepare what is supposed to happen. But others are, today it was not hot. Today it was hot. Thermometers and thermostats. You can choose who you are in your family, in your church, wherever you are, you are any one of those. Either a thermometer in that place or a thermostat in that place. You can make it within yourself. But I want you to know, the best you can choose, become a thermostat. Somebody that is setting the environment. Somebody that is determining the temperature of the place. Not the one that is measuring the temperature. But the one that is determining the temperature. You can determine what is in a place. I want you to know this Ladies and gentlemen, atmosphere setters are men that are men of prayer. And if you look in the Bible, people that have ever set atmosphere for happenings, they are men of prayer. Those people understood the part of prayer in preparing the atmosphere. They understood that I need to engage in prayer to set the atmosphere for the happenings that I can see in my life. They understood that I have to endure setters are men of prayer. And now they know that I need to be a man of prayer as I set the atmosphere for certain happenings. Why? Because number one, God does nothing except in answer to the prayers of his saints. God does nothing except in answer to the prayers of his people. As much as you would want God to do something, he will not do it just because you want him to do it. You have to pray. Prayer is very vital. God does nothing except in answer to the prayers of the saints. Daniel chapter number 10, verse number 12 and 13. I want us to look at that scripture as we read together just to understand and see if we can capture something. Daniel chapter number 10, verse number 12. Let's begin with verse number 12 and verse number 13. The Bible says, let's, I want us to read verse number 12. Let's go together. Then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God. Your words were hard and have come in response to them. How? Why did God come? In response. In response to what you have been doing. Your prayers ever since you laid down your life and you began to seek me. So, so that you may gain understanding of what is happening right from day one when you laid your, your knees on the ground and planted them and began to seek me. Daniel, I had, I had, just the time you humbled yourself, your words were hard and I have come 
in response to those words. I have come. In other words, people that set the atmosphere understand that God will only come to my environment in response to my prayer. When I don't pray, God has nothing to do. When I don't pray, God has no shuguli. Because it takes people that he has put in a place to pray. Ladies and gentlemen, God does nothing except in answer to the prayers of his people. And this must actually commit us to the spirit of prayer. This must tell us that if we want God more, we need to pray more. This must tell us that the more we want to see his power, the more we must engage in prayer. And so it is impossible for us to reach certain horizons without the spirit of prayer. These men that I call atmosphere setters understand and it is their commitment and they know that if I don't pray, God has nothing to do in this environment. I must come in this environment not as a murmuring and complaining person. I must come here not because there is anything else but I have to come here in the spirit of prayer because by that spirit I will prepare an atmosphere. I'll set an atmosphere that will bring change. It will turn around what is happening and that's why you need to learn the power of praying because God does nothing except in answer or in response to prayers. Learn to pray. If you look at Ezekiel chapter number 22, verse number 30. I know it's a common scripture we know. In Ezekiel chapter 22, verse number 30, the Bible says, um, Ezekiel chapter 22, verse number 30. This is what the Bible writes as, as we look at the scriptures. Let's go together. I looked for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land, so I would not have to destroy it. But, look at that. There is a happening that is wrong on the land. Things are going wrong. It's not good. But as God comes to the environment, instead of handling it, he's doing what? Looking for a man. He's looking for somebody to set the atmosphere. He's looking for somebody to enable what he wants to do to be done. He's looking for somebody to be able to engage and bring to realization what is supposed to be realized. I mean, I know things may have gone so bad in your environment and, and, and there is no other way we can change it until you turn yourself and come in that place with the spirit of prayer. I want you to know atmosphere setters are needed because they know God does nothing except in answer to the prayers of his people. Isaiah 59 verse number 16. Isaiah 59 verse number 16. Let's look at what the Bible says in Isaiah 59 verse number 16. The Bible says, can we go together? He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to do what? And so what happened? Uh -huh. Look at that. There is a happening, but in the midst of the happening, God comes to look and he asks, where is anyone here? Can I get somebody to stand in the gap? Can I get somebody to intercede? Can I get somebody to come to the middle of this situation so that I can be able to intervene? How many things are you looking for God to do and God is looking for you to come in and set the atmosphere? You need to know God is looking unto you because atmosphere set us understand that God does nothing except in answer to the prayers. Number two, atmosphere set us understand that prayer is the capital stock of heaven that God uses to shape the destiny of places. They do understand that prayer is the capital stock of heaven that God uses to shape the history of places. And I want you to know, if you want to be a very serious atmosphere setter, you must understand that prayer 
is the capital stock of heaven. In other words, it is what God has that has been presented to him that he will use to shape your history. I want you to look at anybody tell anybody your history looks like your prayer life. Can you talk to him again? Tell your neighbor you look like your prayers. Praise the name of the Lord. That is what it actually means. Because if God uses prayer as the capital stock of heaven, but he may use it to shape the destiny, to shape the history of the places, of the families, of the ministry that we are, then we must be serious with prayer more than any other time. Because it is what God uses, it is what God has, that he used to shape where you want. In other words, we need to take prayer to another level. Prayer is not just an engagement that you do because there is an issue. Prayer should be an oblation you are putting before God. Prayer should be a sacrifice you are laying before God. Prayer should be a stock you are placing before the throne of God. We must change and know that we should not just pray because people have said or bishop has announced that we come to pray. Prayer should be something you are putting in place because you know one time the Lord will use these prayers to shape the history of my family. Your family will look like your prayer life. In other words, you can, stand, you can extend to your family. You can extend to generations through your knees. Your knees can speak in your generations. You may not be there, but your knees will speak that time. You can build up a prayer that is going to speak on their behalf. And that's why you must engage and place prayer where it belongs. Prayer is the capital stock of heaven that God uses to shape my history. To shape my destiny. To shape my future. Every place that we have looks like the prayers that have been made in that place. When I, I went to ask for a plot where we build our church and we build the church, uh, one pastor, a very old man of God who preached in, in the 1960s and 70s, he came to me one time and he greeted me and he said, uh, young man, I can now know that God answers prayers. I asked him why? He told me, young man, I stood where this church is in those old years. And I began to speak like a madman. And I began to say, Lord, I declare a church shall be built here. Something will happen that shall glorify your name. I want you to know, I only came in fulfillment of that hanging prophecy. It is not about my, my, my eloquence. It's not about my smartness. I only was available where a word of prophecy was. I was just found in that place. And that's why I want you to know that there are some things that happen because the environment has been charged. And so when you come in that place, there is such a supernatural grace that comes over your life. Not because of anything, but because the environment has been able to be a charge to accept what is happening. So I want you to see that prayer is the capital stock of heaven. That that was done in that environment. That that was declared many years ago. He saw its fulfillment. We, we are just seeing a church. But he was seeing a prophecy come true. He was seeing the prayers he made being fulfilled at that place. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that prayer is the capital stock of heaven that God will use to shape your history. So your history is attached to your prayer life. How you want your life to be, you can set the atmosphere by prayer. You can build an environment by prayer. And that's why we must come down and understand. And pe people understood it even in the Bible. You will see one man I respect. His name is King David. He takes a whole psalm to dedicate to his son. Psalm 72. This man, he understands, I will not be always with my son. I will not be there at that time. But I can be there through my prayer. I can help him through my prayer life. He understood that my son will be ruling after me. And so I have to do something for him now. And so the Bible says he took the whole of Psalm 72 dedicated to Solomon. 
He went before God, not for anything else. But he goes before God and tells God, uh, today I have come before you that you may grant me the desire that I have on behalf of my son. And he says, I want you, Lord, that as my son rises up to the throne, you will be able to grant him peace in his reign. And that he will be able to have men and women praying for him day and night. And he says, God, when this son rises up to come to rule, kings and queens shall come from far and they will come to honor him. They'll bring him precious things. They'll do good th things to him. He makes a prayer for his son. He knows he will not be there, but he makes a prayer that shall go before him. And he sets a stock that God will use to shape his son. Ladies and gentlemen, show me the stock of prayer over your children. I'll tell you what they shall become. Show me what you have built in the spirit for your family. I can tell you what they can become. Many of us invest in money. Many of us build accounts for our children. But let me tell you, the best account you can put to your child is prayer. Take time and just go before God, not for anything else, but mention them one by one. Prophesy in their lives. Build a stock for them because prayer is the capital stock of heaven that God will use to shape the history of your family. So from now, take in and begin to understand that I can build a stock. Somebody tell your neighbor, I can build a stock. Mm. You can build a stock where you are. You can build a stock. You may not be there with them, but you can be there by your prayers. You can put something on the ground and you can tell the Lord, as my children grow up, Lord, they shall shine. You say it, our seed shall be great on the land. And the riches and wealth shall be in their house. I prophesy, let there be riches and wealth in the house of my children. That in their days, they shall be great. You can build a stock for your children. I don't know if somebody's getting me. Make us talk for your children. That's what prayer is. You, you know, atmosphere set us understand that I can do this. And for me to do, I have to have understanding. But as I build up this prayer, I am setting a stock. I am building up. Uh, I want you to know every prayer we make is received in the bowls of heaven. Every prayer we make is received in the bowls of heaven. And that's why you have no loss. Even the simple prayer you made, it did not just go. It was received. I want you to know. I want us to look at Revelation chapter number 5. I want us to look at verse number 8. What does the Bible say in Revelation chapter 5, verse number 8? Uh, this is what the Bible says. Can we read together? And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a what? A harp, and they were holding golden. They were holding what? And full of what? Which is what? The bowls that were being presented before the throne. They were full of the prayers of the saints. If there is anything presented on your behalf before God, it's your prayers. So you can imagine if you don't pray. You can imagine if you have no time, you have no need to pray. What is presented before the throne? They have nothing to present. Your prayers is what these were presenting before the throne. Let's look at that Revelation chapter 8 now, verse 3 and 5. Revelation chapter 8. Now let's look at verse 3 up to verse 5. Let's begin with verse 3. Let's go together. Another angel who had a what? Uh -huh, came and do, stood at the... Uh -huh. What was he having? Uh -huh. Which is what? Uh -huh. On which shot? Uh -huh. You can imagine what is presented before the throne. Do you have anything that is presented before the throne? You can imagine if you have no time for prayer. If you don't pray, what is presented before the throne? Verse number four, let's go. Let's look at verse number four. Now, the, these are prayers presented. Look at that. Let's go together. The smoke of the incense, together with what? Wow. What, what happened? 
went before uh -huh, from the angel's hand. Wow, praise God. And then verse number five, when that smoke, when it came to the throne of God, what happened? Then the angel took the censer, uh -huh, filled it with fire from the altar, uh -huh, held it on the earth. And what, what was happening? When, the, when now the bowls were full and they are now being poured, something is happening on the earth. Let's, let's read the last part. What, what happened? There came piles of what? Uh-huh. 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 Things were happening. There was manifestation. There was kingdom manifestation that was going on because prayers were built in the bowls of heaven. And when they were full, they were poured. And when they were poured, there was great manifestation. I want you to know that is what we need to build because atmosphere set us understand that I have to pray because it is the capital stock of heaven that actually God uses to shape my history. Your history looks like your prayer life. Your destiny will look like your prayer life. You have no way you will look any other than your prayer life. Now that you are in the house, take serious your life of prayer. Because your life of prayer determines a lot into what you shall become. Can somebody say amen? Why should this, I mean, atmosphere set us, they understand number four, which we want to end there. They understand that I must pray because they know that men have a domain. They know that men have a domain. We have a domain. They understand that we people have a domain. We have a domain. We have a place. We have a place where we exercise dominion. We exercise authority. We exercise power. God has delegated us some place where we exercise authority. And God is a God of protocol. He doesn't break into people's lives. That's why even in Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 says, I knock by the door of your heart. If anyone opens, I'll do what? God is not a breaker into people's lives. He's a gentleman. He comes when you open up. He has given you a domain which you allow or you close. It means your domain looks like the way you have allowed it. Let me repeat that again. Where you are looks like the way you have allowed it. That place you are is a domain that God has given unto you. It has been delegated to your life. Let's look at Psalms chapter 115 verse 16. What does the Bible say? In Psalms chapter 115 verse number 16. This is what the Bible says in Psalms 115 verse number 16. Okay, let's, let's read together. The highest heavens belong to. But what has happened to the earth? He has given you what? It means for God to operate on the earth legally, he must come through man. For God to operate, because he's a God of protocol, he delegated it to man. He gave where you are. I want you to know where you are is a domain given to you. It's an environment that God has delegated to you. And you have great responsibility to prepare an environment for what you want to happen. You need to know God has given that place to you as a domain. That's why even Jesus had to come as man. That's why he was to be born as man. In order to exercise authority on the earth. He could not come as a spirit and exercise authority. God had delegated the earth to man. And man, it means the flesh and the spirit. I want you to know where you are is a domain given to you. You can shape it. You can make it. You can prepare it. And the easiest way to do it is by prayer, your prayer life. Your prayer life as much to shape 
your domain, that place you are exercising authority, the Lord waits for you to make it so that he can come in and he can partner with you to do what you want. If you don't invite him, that's why God comes on invitation because he gave that place as your domain. So when you pray, you are giving God a legal right to come. When you don't pray, you still have the legal right for him not to come. Because he delegated it to you. He gave it to you. You need to understand you are a very important part of God in fulfilling his agenda when it comes to the planet earth. The earth has been given to man. And so I want you to be challenged and have you exercise your authority in that domain you have. That family, that home will look like the way you want it to look like. It means you have to rise up to the fact and understand, I can do something in this place. I can change what is happening. I can begin to set a new atmosphere for the sake of what I want to happen. Somebody say amen. I, I hope I'm talking to atmosphere setters. People that understand that I have a job to do. I have a responsibility to work on. And I need to set the environment for what I want to happen. So our prayer must be taken to that perspective. That's why we pray. That's why we come before God. That's why we don't wait for people to tell us to come to pray. I come because I'm investing in prayer. I'm investing for my children. I'm investing for my future. Because God will use that prayer as his capital stock of heaven to shape my destiny, to shape my children, to shape my future. And so that's why I come to pray even when everybody else does not come to pray. Because it is my way of investment. I know God will use those prayers. God one day we'll pour those prayers back with rumblings, with earthquake, with thunderings, with miracles, with great manifestation. People will see my children high and they don't understand what happened. It is an answer to the prayer that I made many years ago. They don't understand. They think they, they rise up to fight them. But in the actual sense, they, can man they cannot manage to fight them. Because these children are just an answer to the prayer. It's not even about them. It's about God. It's not even about them. It's about what I prayed for their lives. I want you to take prayer to another level. Change your perspective to prayer. I want you to know you can pray more than what you are praying. Because now you know what prayer does. You know what it can work out in your life. I challenge you. I call you back to the table of prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. I want us to make some moment of prayer. Just want us to make some declarations as we come to the end. Today we were introducing each other to one another. Praise the Lord. <laughs> because I know today your aunt and I have been very high trying to figure out and know uh, what kind of person is this. And we thank God that you have, you have managed at least. You have maneuvered through the waters. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want us to make some moment of prayer. And uh, normally when it comes to prayer, I like praying all my heart. Because I know what it does. Somebody say amen. One way we can be able to set an atmosphere, we begin by first of all enthroning God in our place, in our homes, in, our, in whatever we are. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse number 17. And that's where we want us to begin to pray. And I want you to pray. Make, turn this house to be a house of prayer. Let's make this place to be a real environment of prayer. That heavens will know that surely there is something going on. Deuteronomy 26 verse 17 is our prayer point number one today. Uh, let's go to, together. Let's say, you have declared this day that what? That the Lord is what? And that? And that? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. The first thing I want us to pray from that is that I want you to declare the Lord to be your God. 
I want you to tell the Lord, I declare you, I proclaim you to be the God of my life. I enthrone you over my life. I declare you shall be my God forever. I enter into a covenant and declare you shall be the God of my family.